Hello friends, this video on anatomy of flowering plants part 16 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this we end our discussion on monocot root and now we will talk about dicot root. So here also let us first try to understand the structure of dicot root on our own and then we will look at an appropriate diagram. Now when we talk about dicot root here also the basic things remain the same. For example here also you will have one epidermis the way it was in case of a monocot root. So the epidermis will remain the same. Again similarly you will have one endodermis So epidermis, endodermis, the parenchyma cells between epidermis and endodermis, all those things will remain the same. So what will change is the vascular tissues arrangement. The way xylem and phloem are arranged, that will differ. So let us have a look at that as well. So this is basically the endodermis. Now inside the endodermis you have pericycle. So this is pericycle. So pericycle is also nothing but parenchyma cells with thick walls. That is the only difference between pericycle. These parenchyma cells and the parenchyma cells which are present between epidermis and endodermis. Here they are with thick cells. So this is the pericycle. Right? Now inside the pericycle, how are the xylem and phloem arranged? Let now this is how xylem is arranged. So this is the arrangement of the xylem. So the green colored cells are xylem. So how are the phloem arranged? The phloems are arranged alternative to xylem. So where are the phloems? So the phloems are arranged here. So these cells form phloem. So here if you see the arrangement of xylem and phloem are quite different than that in the case of monocot root. Right? So these red colored cells are nothing but phloem. And this region as usual is made up of, is filled with parenchyma cells with thin walls. Right? So everything else remains the same between a dicot root and a monocot root except for the arrangement of the xylem and the phloem. So the vascular bundles are different in monocot and dicot root. Otherwise, the, the structure wise it is almost the same. Correct? So here also you have the central region which is the pith. So this is pith. And these are the parenchyma cells. Correct? So here if you see the main difference between the dicot root and the monocot root is in the pith, xylem and phloem. So here the arrangement of xylem and phloem is different and here the pith is also smaller when compared to the monocot root. So pith is quite smaller but there in the monocot root it was quite big. So now let us have a quick review on the dicot root. This is how a dicot root looks like. So here also you can see the arrangement of xylem, phloem. So here also you have the epidermis, you have cortex which is made up of the parenchyma cells and the endodermis. Here also you have the Casparian strips, pericycle. So here the pericycle is few layers of thick walled parenchyma cells 
secondary growth, growth initiates in these cells. So that is something very, very important in dicot root. So here we can see secondary growth as well. That means a meristematic layer of tissue later develops in these pericycle cells. So pericycle was nothing but parenchyma cells, right? So here you can see this is your pericycle. So here in this pericycle, later a meristematic layer will develop which will give rise to secondary xylem and secondary phloem. So that is why we say secondary growth is present in dicot roots. Pith is smaller when compared to monocot root. So here you can see the pith is quite small when compared to monocot. Talking about the vascular cylinder again, here also the vascular cylinder is xylem plus phloem plus the pith and the pericycle. So that is the vascular cylinder which is present here. Conjunctive tissues. So here some comparenchymatic tissues are also present between xylem and phloem. So here if suppose this is xylem and these are the phloem. In between them there are some parenchymatous tissue present which are known as conjunctive tissues. So these conjunctive tissues were not present in case of the monocot root. So these are some of the noticeable differences between monocot root and dicot root. Now please remember, I mean, please have an idea about the diagram of these because if you are asked to explain the structure of monocot and dicot root, it becomes mandatory to draw the diagram for each of them. So let us have a quick uh, discussion on monocot root versus dicot root. So in monocot root, the Pith is well developed and large, so that central region is quite large, whereas in dicot root it is smaller. In monocot root, more xylem bundles are present, whereas in dicot root, fewer xylem bundles because in dicot root, the xylem bundles were located in this fashion, they were arranged in this fashion. So, only few xylem bundles were present, but in case of monocot root, the xylem bundles were present in this fashion so it was like more of xylem bundles so something like this in monocot root so no secondary growth occurs because there is no meristematic tissue which can give rise to secondary xylem and phloem but in dicot root secondary growth growth occurs and it starts from the parenchyma cells of the pericycle Conjunctive tissues are mostly schelenchymatous and in dicot root the conjunctive tissues are mostly parenchymatous. In order to fill the gaps between the xylem and the phloem, there are some tissues present between them. So those tissues are generally sclerenchymatous, that is primarily for support and they are dead in case of monocot root, that is they are sclerenchymatous. Whereas in dicot root, they are living and they are parenchymatous in nature. So these are some of the differences between monocot root and dicot root. Now with this discussion on the anatomy of root, I think we can go ahead with the Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.